Fine, so for today, we're going to talk about continuous compound interest. This is an application still of the first order differential equation. There's one thing that uh, we need to emphasize when we are dealing with continuous compound interest. Okay, in continuous compound interest, it is noted that the rate of interest must be compounded annually. Okay, per annum. The increase of the money should be per year. Okay. So we have this following differential equations here in that we have dp over dt is equals to rp, okay? It means that the rate of change of the account, dp over dt, is equal to the nominal rate of interest per year. That is per year, okay? The interest rate per year and the r or the p is signifies is the money present in the account at any time p. Okay, as we as we know, when we invest a money into a bank or into a, some form of investment, that money that we invest after some time should grow. And the 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 money that we invested after some years should not be the same money that we should get. Okay, after several years, it should grow. That's why it's called an investment. Okay, that's why there is what we call an interest. Okay. Per year and the amount of money being added per year into the account is proportional again to the nominal rate of interest. Okay, and if we're going to solve this DE, we will be arriving at this solution where P is the future worth, P sub O is the initial, okay, worth of your money multiplied by E raised to R, that is still the nominal rate of interest per year multiplied by the time. Okay? So, so to further understand this, let us solve problems. Okay? But before that, I would like you, uh, I would like to uh, actually <clears throat> derive the general solution. Okay? It's very easy. This is our uh, differential equation a while ago. If we're going to use variable separable here, we have dp over p is equals to r dt. Okay? And if we integrate both sides of the equation, we'll be having ln of p is equal now to rt plus c. Exponen exponentialize both sides of our equation. Okay? Exponentiating both sides. So we have, this would cancel, we will be having p. Okay? e raised to rt multiplied by e raised to c by uh, loss of exponent. And e raised to c is simply c, okay? So that we have c, e raised to rt. But if I'm going to let c as p sub o, we'll be having p is equals to p sub o, e raised to rt. And that's the general solution that I have shown a while ago, okay? And this, this equation we shall be using on, on solving continuous compound interest, okay? For number one, if the nominal rate, interest rate is 3%, how much is 5,000 pesos worth in 10 years in a continuously compounded account? Okay? So we have a nominal rate of 3%. We must always represent R as decimal. If it is in percent, we must always uh, convert it into a decimal. So that is 0 0.03. Okay? How much is 5,000 pesos worth in 10 years? So 5,000 pesos would be your P sub O. That is 5,000 pesos. And 10 years is the time. Okay? 10 years is the time. So if we're going to substitute it with our equation, P is equal to P sub O E raised to RT. Okay? So we have the future word P is equal now to 5,000 multiplied by E raised to R, which is 0 0.03. Again, we've convert, converted the 3% into decimal multiplied by 10 years the present or the future word i mean of our investment would be what in peso still that is if you're going to compute that 6750 so from 5000 pesos that you have invested with a nominal rate of 3% per year after 10 years, your 5,000 pesos would be 6,750 pesos. Okay? It gained some sort of very little amount. Okay? So, I hope that's clear. For number two, 
the accumulated amount of 5,000 pesos is 20,000 pesos after 9 years. Calculate the interest rate if it is compounded continuously. Okay, again, our equation is P is equal to P sub O e raised to RT. Okay, the accumulated 5,000 pesos is 20,000 pesos after 9 years. If we're going to analyze our present worth is actually 5,000 pesos. Our future worth after 9 years, it says 20,000 pesos. And our time is actually 9 years. Okay? Calculate the interest rate if it is compounded continuously. So, we are obviously looking for the nominal rate interest R. Okay? So, we're plugging this into our equation. So, we have P is 20,000 is now equal to 5,000 multiplied by E raised to R multiplied by 9 because that's 9 years. So, if I'm going to divide both sides by 5,000, we have 20,000 divided by 5,000, okay? So, let me just write this, okay? 5,000 is equal to E raised to 9R, okay? Okay, so 20,000 divided by 5,000 is 4 is equal to E raised to 9R, okay? How do we get R? We take the LN of both sides, okay? And we know that LN of E would cancel, leaving the right side of the equation as 9R, and we have LN of 4. Okay, to get R, simply divide both sides by 9. So we have LN of 4 over 9. And our nominal interest rate is 0 0.5. 154, okay? That is in terms of uh, non-decimal. So, we are being asked for the interest rate. If the interest rate is always a percent R, so we have to multiply this by 100 and the, the interest rate would now become 15.4%. And that is our answer for this problem. It's a... It's, uh, quite big, okay? Because after 9 years, your 5,000 would become 20,000. Okay, so for our third example, so we have this problem, okay? How long will it take a bank deposit? Of course, this is uh, an error, okay? Bank deposit to double if interest is compounded continuously at a constant rate of per 4% per annum. Per annum means per year. So we have to take note of the given. Uh, given. So we have P is equal to P not E raised to RT. Okay? And we are given a nominal interest rate of 0.04 because that's 4% divided by 100. We have 0.04. So it, it, it says how long will it take a bank deposit to double if interest is compounded continuously? So let's say my 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 initial uh, money in the bank is this peaceable. My that's my initial. Okay. The problem states that how long will it take for this initial bank deposit peaceable to double? Okay. It means the future word P is equal to two peaceable. Okay. So there is no problem if that. If the present word is not given because it says how long will it double. So what will happen is that we have a twice P sub O because how long will it take to double? The deposit to double. Your initial deposit is P sub O. Your future worth would be twice the P sub O because it says double. Okay? How long? We are looking obviously for the time it takes for the initial um, initial money to double, right? So we have we're going to substitute our our uh, solution here. So P sub O is still the same. That's my initial money. E raised to R, which is 0 0.04 multiplied by T. And my future work is to double this initial. So I have to multiply the P sub O by two here. Okay, just like what we did here. So as you can see here, if we divide both sides by P sub O, this P sub O would only cancel. Okay? So we have 2 is equal to E raised to 0.04 T 
and in order to get t, we need to take the ln or natural logarithm of the both sides of the equation. So we have ln of e raised to 0.04t. This would cancel. We have ln of 2 on the left side. And we have 0.04 times time. Okay. And to get the time it takes for your investment to double is we have ln of 2 over 0.04 and your answer that you would get 17.33 years okay so 17.33 years and most commonly since this is compounded yearly okay we can round this up okay this is a continuously compounded interest per annum we can round this up up to approximately 18 years okay so that would be our answer okay so let's proceed now for number four a depositor places ten thousand dollars in a certificate of deposit account which pays seven percent interest per annum compounded continuously how much will be in the account after two years how much will the depositor depositor have after five years okay so this is a very simple for letter a at time is equal to two years okay what is the future worth so first we need to again recall our equation so we have ten dollars in the into our account so we have ten thousand dollars multiplied by e raised to seven percent interest per annum per year so we have 0 0.0, okay, 0 0.07, okay, multiplied by 2, okay. And our future worth would be 11,502.74 dollars, okay. That would be our future worth after 2 years, okay. How about, how about, if we are going to solve that at time is equals to it says five years okay so the same formula okay since you want to know the value after five years you plug in this the same formula ten thousand dollars for your initial e is to 0 0.07 multiplied by five and you would get 14,190.68 dollars. That's the money after five years. Okay? Or another way to solve this is after two years, for example, you after two years you have this amount. Okay? And there is still three years remaining because it is actually asking how much will the depositor have after five years? So another way to do it is we have P, okay? P sub O would be 11,502.74. Take note that this value is after two years. So how many remaining years are we are going to wait? We have five years, so three minus two or five minus two is equal to three. So what will happen? The same interest rate, okay? Per annum, so we have still 0. 07 so this is after two years okay and we are after five years so this is after two years so we have three years remaining left okay because the increase of the interest is actually proportional to the product of the or proportional to the initial amount okay so what will happen we have p is equals to this and you would be surprised that the answer is still the same okay Okay, down to our last problem for this video. So, what constant interest rate is required if an initial deposit placed into an account that has an interest rate or compounded continuously is to double its value in 6 years? So, again, the problem here is actually asking what constant interest rate is required. If we have an initial de deposit placed into account, okay, to double its value in six years again in six years to double its value in six years so p sub o is my initial 
Okay, my present amount. Okay, my future amount should be twice P sub O. Okay, because to double its value again in 6 years. So pretty much the same problem, type of problem we have encountered a while ago. So we have to replace future word as twice the present word. And that is equal to the present word E raised to R because that's the unknown multiplied by 6. This P sub O will cancel. So we have 2 is equals to E raised to 6R. Getting the natural logarithm of both sides, we have ln of E raised to 6R. So we can definitely get ln of 2 is equals to 6R. And we can get the interest rate, nominal interest rate as ln of 2 over 6. So obviously that would be a decimal. Though, so, so that is 0 0.1155. The percent... Uh, nominal interest rate would be 11.55%. Okay. So, that's all. So, that's how easy it is to compute compound interest in the differential equation. Okay. In the application of uh, differential equation. First order differential equation. And I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you so much. And please, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit this video a thumbs up. So thank you so much for listening. God bless you all.